Welcome. Let me give a very brief introduction to complex numbers here. Um, everything's explained in full glorious detail in volume two of this Thinking Mathematics series, which you can find on my website, so feel free to go, go for that. But let's just get us going. First of all, I'm going to assume we know nothing about complex numbers. Uh, let's just play with the number line for the moment. So here's the number line. Do, 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 do. Send it at 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I'm going to play a game. Suppose I perform a transformation on this. I decide to add 2 to all my numbers on the number line. What does that do? Well, 0 now becomes too high. It becomes 2. 1 becomes too high. 3, 4, 5. Uh, negative 1 becomes too high. 1. Negative 2 becomes too high. 0. Negative 3 becomes too high. Negative 1 and so forth. So geometrically, what is adding 2 done? It actually corresponds to a shift of my number line. Uh, not very exciting, but we'll just do another example. Suppose I decide instead of adding 2, I want to subtract 2. Well, that's going to change things, maybe not too dramatically. Uh, it's, this 0 now becomes minus 2, negative 2. 1 becomes shifted to 1, negative minus 2 is negative 1. 2 take away 2 is 0. 3 take away 2 is 1, and so on. So we can see, without me going through it, that if I decide to subtract 2 on my number line, that corresponds to a geometric transformation of shifting the uh, number line again, in this case, to the right. All right, hours are fun to be had with adding subtracting uh, components. Uh, let's now, oops, let's get rid of this, do something a little more exciting, perhaps. Let's, uh, instead of adding 2 or subtracting 2, let's multiply by 2. What's the geometric interpretation of multiplying a number line, the entries on number line, by 2? Well, 0 still stays as 0. 0 times 2 is 0. 1 becomes 2. 2 becomes 4. 3 becomes 6. Negative 1 becomes negative 2. Negative 2 becomes negative 4. Negative 3 becomes negative 6. That's my new number line. What's it done? Well, it's actually made my number line go through its numbers twice as fast as contracted it. So multiplying by 2 corresponds to a contraction of the number line. Um, how can I get an expansion of the number line instead of a contraction? Well, instead of multiplying by 2, we could say divide by 2 or multiply by a half. In this case, what would we get? 0 still remains 0. Doo -doo -doo. Let's uh, get this going, sorry. 0 times a half is a half. 1 times a half is a half. 2 times a half is 1. 3 times a half is 1 and a half. Negative 1 times a half. Negative 2 times a half. Negative 3 times a half, and so on. So it looks like my number line is being a bit slow now. It takes me twice as long to get through the numbers that normally would appear. It's expanded the number line. So all these operations here have just uh, done correspond to a geometric transformation of the number line. Let me go through another one. One more. And it's kind of an interesting one because it has its own character to it. Let's multiply the number line by negative 1. What does that do? Well, 0 times negative 1 is still 0, but 1 is now becomes negative 1. 2 becomes 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 3. Negative 1 becomes positive 1. Negative 2 becomes positive 2. Negative 3 becomes positive 3. So multiplying by negative 1 has had a very interesting effect. It corresponds to a flip of the number line. Basically, we've just rotated it 90 degree, 180 degrees. So I like this one because it has a different character. Adding and subtracting numbers corresponds to shifts within the one-dimensional nature of the line. And multiplying and, and dividing by numbers co corresponds to expansion and contractions kept in the one-dimensional nature of the line. Multiplied by negative 1 has given us a new uh, realm of freedom. It's actually taken the line and rotated it through two-dimensional space, 180 degrees. So we've now given ourselves, in some sense, permission to think in a two-dimensional way. So I'm going to ask myself, what transformation corresponds to a 90 degree rotation. That is, what do I have to multiply the number line by, and I'll call it W for what, so that it affects instead a 90 degree rotation instead of a 180 degree rotation? Well, that's kind of weird. What am I asking for? I'm saying start with the number line. Oops, where's my pen gone? Uh, da -da. And say, OK, 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2. I'm going to go multiply by w, whoops, by w, so at this time I get a 90 degree rotation. So this will be 1w, this will be 2w's, this will be 3w's, this will be 4w's. And I guess this one will be negative w, negative 2w's. What number does that trick? Well, to get a feel for this number, 
What happens if I multiply by w again? That is, I affect a second 90 degree rotation. Well, that gives me back down to this being 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. That is, two multiplications of w is going to be the same effect as two multiplications of 90, by rotations of 90 degrees. That is, I want w squared to be the same effect as 180 degree rotation, which is the effect of negative 1. I seek a number with the property that w squared is negative 1. Well, no such number exists in the ordinary, ordinary sense of things. So people say, I'm full of folly and I'm imagining things. Well, let's call this an imaginary number i. i is a number such that i squared is negative 1. And geometrically, multiplication by i corresponds to a 90 degree multiplication. All right, we're in the world of fancy, but we're just going to play with it because mathematicians love playing, love engaging in intellectual play. So what I'm really saying here is I've now created for myself a number with the probability that multiplication by this number, i, affects a 90 degree rotation. So here's my number line. I'll just draw half the number line this time. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I have the property that when I multiply all these by i, I get a 90 degree rotation. So this is 1 times i, this is 2 times i, this is 3 times i, and most mathematicians, instead of writing i, we just call this the ith axis. I, I th axis. So when I see the 4 here, it's not really the number 4, it's actually 4 times i. Bit bad, that's actually very bad. Well, you know, this is again play. People cannot help and say, look, this looks like a Cartesian coordinate system. It looks like I've got an x-axis and a y-axis. In which case, I'd love to give meaning to things that are sort of between the two. It seems reasonable to say, look, this is 1 over in the real dimension, so I've really got the number 1 here plus I've got a component of 2 in this i direction, plus 2i. This is just me making things up, but it seems to be irresistible to say, in some sense, this is, well, this point here is one component of realness and two components of imaginaryness. So let's call this the number 1 plus 2i. In which case, this number here, which looks like it's got three components of realness, do 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 plus one component of imaginaryness, imaginariness, I'm making up these words and I can't even pronounce them, let's call that 3 plus i. In which case a number like uh, 2 plus 4i would be two parts of real, here it is, and four parts of i of imaginaryness would be up here. Uh, if I want to go a little bit further, uh, something like 3 minus i would be three parts of real, and negative one part of imaginary. And we'll say it's this point here. And that's it, hours of fun plotting points. In fact, I can even think at this point here, four on the real sense is really four parts of realness and zero imaginaryness. But most people won't write, bother writing zero times i, they'll just still call that four. Which means then this point over here, this four on this axis, is really no real part and four lots of imaginary parts. That really does mean the number four i which is what I should have labeled this axis as, but mathematicians don't. That's it. That's plotting complex numbers. Um, it just seems mysterious. It just seems strange. It just seems like folly. But that's what mathematicians do, because remarkably, this turns out to have immense value. In fact, for the full details, do indeed look at chapter, is it 16, 17, somewhere like that, of this particular volume too. Plus, I also have a, a, another a video on complex numbers and how they are absolutely useful in uniting all of trigonometry, which is a ghastly subject that's suddenly made easy through complex numbers. All right, very strange, very mysterious what I'm doing here, but that's the basics, that's the mechanics. Thanks very much.